A group of students went through e-learning planning and management course unit one lecture and have some questions they would like to discuss with the local facilitators in the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. A special session was scheduled between the students and the facilitators, Dr. Badrul Khan and Dr. Kelly Plagis. What follows is the results of this session. very useful for my general understanding of e-learning planning and management. I've used the student lounge on the McWheaton Moodle and since the three of us have similar questions I thought it would be a good time for us to get together with both of you and just talk about it further. Mark, I understand you have quite some school questions. I do. Um, I work for a company that develops e-learning for the U.S. government. I was reading through the Unit 1 lecture, and I was wondering, um, what about SCORM? Mark, you ask a very good question. Yes, international technical standards such as SCORM and IEEE, which is Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, are very important for developing reusable e-learning objects. You see, under the framework is the technological dimension we have infrastructural planning. So in the infrastructural planning, you need to have international interoperability standards. Yes, we, in this course, will cover SCOM and any international standard, and that falls under uh, the whole framework. And this is a type of technical standard issues that you would be interested in seeing included in the infrastructure planning section of the technological dimension of your plan. By the way, you can't go far without standards. You must follow international technical, technical standards. Dr. Pledges, you have been so involved with so many government projects. Can you please provide your opinions on this topic? My pleasure. As Dr. Khan pointed out in his framework, without following international technical standards, you can't reuse your shareable content objects, as well as it makes it very difficult to market globally. SCORE is required by the United States government for their e-learning products. If you create your learning products and your objects following the international interoperability standards such as IEEE or IMS or SCORE, they can be reused and shared by various courses, not only within, within your institution, but beyond. Reusable and shareable learning objects not only save money, but also promote collaboration amongst other e-learning partner institutions. Thank you. This is how I understand it. Good. Good. Uh, Lily, I understand you have some questions. Uh, please go ahead with your first question. Thank you. I work for an institution which offers online courses for students in different countries globally. My question is, uh, how sensitive should we be while designing um, learning materials for students from different cultural backgrounds? Lily, you ask a very good question. Your question can be answered by looking at the ethical and interface design dimension of the framework. Cross-cultural communication is a major section within the e-learning framework, especially the ethical dimension. Yes, we have to be very sensitive in what icons, symbols, and languages we use in our e-learning materials. For example, in Bangladesh, people use thumbs up sign to disrespect or challenge people. But in the United States and other Western countries, it is used to me, way to go, or you didn't care. Very interestingly, it's also very uh, funny that a student in Bangladesh who answered a question correctly, but the computer is still saying, thumbs up, means you didn't do good. Think about this. The student will say, I got the answer right, computer is still challenging me or disregarding me. That's the cross-cultural communication. So I believe if 
your institution is venturing into more and more countries. So your institution should be aware of the cultural background of these learners that come into your institution. So you come up with the guidelines for your geographical location that you're offering your courses. And I like to see that included in the plan that you're developing as a part of your final project in this course. Having, looking into different cultures and their diversity of ethnicity, ethnicity I think will come up with a good plan and your institution should be very happy to use your plan to advance their learning initiatives to the countries that they have not done yet. I believe any institution venturing into the global educational market should have guidelines on cross-cultural issues. And you are developing an e-learning plan in this course for your institution. So if you look into the areas or the geographical locations where your courses will be offered and think about kind of cultural diversity, cross-cultural communication issues are involved, you incorporate them in your plan and you'll look good. And that's a very good question that you ask. And good luck with your project. It's very important, once you have your plan, to ensure that you train your instructional designers, your graphic artists, as well as your programmers. Ultimately, you want your entire e-learning development team to be acutely aware of the cultural issues that they have to avoid in developing the e-products. Additionally, make sure that you do a thorough QA or quality assurance of your products to ensure that none of them have been inserted Thanks, thank you. Maureen, I understand you have some questions. Uh, Dr. Khan, I teach an instructor-led course for the Federal Aviation Administration. And I really like teaching face-to-face. -face. But it seems to me sometimes that some of the material could be better taught if it were blended learning. Is it possible to develop blended learning for my instructor-led course at FAA? Maureen, I'm so glad that you asked this question. In fact, in the frameworks, pedagogical dimension, you see the pedagogical dimensions, we discuss the content suitability testing, meaning that we want to know what parts of the course content are good for face-to-face -face courses and what parts are good for e-learning. Some content can be taught and facilitated better with learning and some requires face-to-face -face learning. Let me give you an example where e-learning method can be blended with face-to-face -face instruction. Using video conferencing or other synchronous video broadcasting, we can show a live surgery in an operating room by a renowned medical professor. Medical students all over the world can see this surgery live online. With technology, we can display three-dimensional images, we can have still pictures, we can go deeper into the uh, more complicated areas of surgery. This is the beauty of e-learning. As you know, e-learning in this way used as a demonstration purposes only. As some of you may guess, can we really learn surgery from looking to the video images? No. For learning how to operate on patients, the students have to touch the blood, understand patients' conditions, and communicate with other medical professionals in order to conduct the surgery. So you see, this is an example of where hands-on and face-to-face -face experiential learning activities are needed. Maureen, as you can see, live video conferencing is a part of e-learning, which is basically complementing the hands-on face-to-face instruction. That's the blended learning. In your situation, as you ask these questions at FAA, in your de developing the plan for, the, for your course, 
I would suggest that you can identify various parts of courses suitable for instructor lab and also find out which are good for online. Then in the proposal in this class that you're going to develop as your final project, then you can propose both instructor lab and e-learning components that complement each other and it's very seamless process. One would not have to guess which goes with what, but you have to do this good job of integrating together so that your plan shows a wonderful learning opportunities. And here the students will have or the learners will have fun learning it will un uninterrupted. So I hope this helps you understanding how to incorporate other learning methodologies, all, uh, other learning methods into your face-to-face -face classes. Uh, it's an excellent question. Thanks for asking this really. Appreciate it. Thank you for your time, Dr. Khan. This has really helped me focus on what I need to do. I hope we can do it again soon. Is that okay? Did you find it useful? First of all, you know, I'd like to say to you all that, you know, you have very good questions and come up with more good questions. And thank you for coming today and call us. Send an email. I don't want to send a lot of email. That's okay. <laughs> That's good. Uh, see you next time.